I'd like to call this meeting to order. Miami Township Trustee, January 17, 2024. Uh, we have the January 3rd minutes, but do we want to vote on them when our recorder is not here? I am, might as well. It's being recorded. It's going, okay. to, be, it's going to be official. It will be in a minute. I would entertain a motion to adopt the January 3rd minutes. I so move. Do I hear a second? A second. Um, any discussion? Any corrections? I made one minor one, but she changed it. And, and I have none. We did it. <clears throat> Well, I will call the roll. Mutcher? Yes. What's your name? Moyer. Yes. <laughs> Moyer. Hollister, yes. I'd entertain a motion to approve Payment of bills totaling $61,499.33. From the general fund, $8,059.99. From the fire fund, $31,350.47. From cemetery, $7,000. EMS billing, $3,965.75. Road and bridge, $10,000, $10,567.14. So moved. I hear a motion. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? No. No. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Wisher? Yes. Hollister says yes. Uh, rather than read all of the correspondence uh, as listed on the agenda, are there any items that trigger business? None of these you want to add anything to the agenda from? Not no. I. Well, the fund status, revenue status, was, relates to fiscal officer's report. Uh, any comments or topics from the public? Something you'd like to add to the new business or something you'd like to say now? Boy, I need to talk slower. Fire department report. Uh, so we had uh, 26 EMS calls um, since last meeting, five fire, uh, two, uh, we requested mutual aid for two EMS calls and one fire call. Uh, the uh, C shift had a cardiac arrest that they were successfully resuscitated from across the street. Um, I, I'm still waiting to hear back if if uh, they're still alive, but, but so good work for them. Um, I gave you copies of the little fast facts. So just to hit a little bit of stuff on this, and obviously you get, get have any questions or anything, holler or, or email me. Um, so we had a total of 1,061 uh, total runs. 810 of those were EMS, 251 of those were fire calls. So more or less than 22, you know right off the end? I'm sorry, say that again? You know if it's more or less than 22? Uh, it is, uh, it's a 1.7% 1, 1. decrease from 22. So actually, you know, I'm surprised it wasn't a little bit more than that, so. Share this down um, Sure. Oh, here, I've got more copies. Did you say the total run down 1.7? 1.7. Yeah, I thought we were like 1,200 a year, but I that number. Uh, we did 112 uh, fire safety inspections, 19 public ad events, 
uh, total fire loss was um, 392,600. We had a total of 714 different patient contacts and 533 of those were actual transports, 72 that were just treated and released and then 11 DOAs. Uh, transport destinations are pretty much the same as percentage-wise as they were last year. Sewing is uh, number one, uh, GMH is number two, and then the rest regional hospitals drop down pretty low on the list. Uh, we had, so 27% of our, our ambulance calls are advanced life support. Uh, with the remainder being BLS, and that's pretty, that's a pretty, pretty standard. I don't, we don't see that very a whole heck of a lot at all. And for the most part, uh, B shift is the busiest at 37% of the calls, and A and C shift are pretty much right on. If you look at the uh, top incident locations, could could you remind me what time of day are those different shifts? Um, well, it would, it's just a rotation. It's not a time. So like right now, uh, A-shift is working, except Nate's on his Kelly, so Nate's out of town. But um, It's not an eight-hour shift? No, they, they work 24s. So it's really a day, a whole day? Mm -hmm. Yep, correct. So there's a group up called the A-shift that kind of work together, and a little group called the B-shift, and a little group called the C-shift, and they... Yep, exactly. And that's, that's a very typical so of a 24-hour place. It's completely random that B-shift got more, I suppose. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So if you look at the, the incident locations, those are just kind of rough area. You will see a private residence in Yellow Springs listed twice. It's not a typo. It's actually just two different locations. Um, but, you know, that's pretty, pretty typical as well. Um, call volume. Uh, by day of the week is always kind of interesting how that all plays out. And the busiest call times are surprising. So three to four, four to five, and eight to nine. These are all PM. Yeah. For those who don't have one of these sheets. So who, who would know? Uh, it, as far as response time, so average response time is five minutes and 18 seconds. So that response time, again, just to review that, is from when we get the call to when we're actually physically on scene. Um, now in the past I've heard uh, Colin throwing around seven minutes as the time. Mm -hmm. So now it's, yep. this year it was faster. Yep. So it's a little skewed because we used to do Bath Township also. Yes. Yeah. So right. that, that average. Yeah. 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 yeah, that totally, completely yeah. mucked with those stats. 82% of the calls are in the, in the village. Um, five percent in the east side, four percent on the west. Three uh, side township and west side township. Sorry. Oh, yeah. oh everybody has. Three, never mind. Three percent in Clifton, two percent at the college, two percent in the Park Glen or Gorge areas, and then two percent are mutual aid. Um, as far as big big things that happened over the year, obviously passing the additional tax levy. Uh, Colin retiring after 25 years, and me being appointed interim. Uh, and of course, the Hawthorne placement or apartment fire was a pretty substantial thing on day one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Day one. I'm still getting crap for that, by the way. Um, Cassidy and Georgia were promoted to acting sergeants, um, and they are doing an amazing job. Good to hear. Yeah, they're they're on the ball. Um, Additional training, a lot of grain bin stuff, and confined space rescue. Um, we've actually done some stuff uh, with Xenia City in terms of addressing, doing some mutual aid. Um, so we're now actually on their CAD cards for any of those types of, of incidences. And we're actually gonna start doing a lot more rope training and some of the specialized rescue training using the Glen and the Gorge. So they're gonna to come to us, we're gonna to go to them, um, which is actually will be an absolutely terrific, terrific thing. Um, you know, that, I think that covers the bulk of it anyway. Any questions? Um, 
on the front page, three hundred ninety-two thousand dollars loss from fire. Is that out in the community? Or what what is that? Um, so fire loss would be uh, you know someone someone's house catches on fire, uh -huh. and it is an estimate that we do for that particular call. That would be the total of damage that was done in the township. Now, by far the bulk of that, of course, was Hawthorne. I'm surprised it's that low then. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I can't um, remember what it was last year, honestly. Do you no, no, what I mean, given that we had a large apartment fire this year, oh. 392000 is the price of a house in town. So, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, so that's an estimate that's done by me going back, looking at the, the tax records. Um, and you know that's just that's the only accurate way to, to do it. So it you know it's, that's where the data comes from. Did we have any total or substantial fire loss other than Hawthorne? No. Yeah, that's why I didn't think so. No, no it actually yeah, fortunately. Um, now what's not in there uh, actually would be crops. So the couple of big brush fires that we had that burn all that corn mm -hmm. that's that we don't track that. Mm -hmm. um, nobody does actually. Yeah. And, and I couldn't bust it out on that. I just have to ask the farmer. What yeah. about that truck that got fired? Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. I don't know what kind of truck it was. Doesn't matter. Uh, on your monthly report, mutual aid requested. That's what we requested mutual aid? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, were we asked to res respond to any mutual aid? This? Um, off the top of my head, I don't think so, but I can add that if you want to see that. That's not a big deal. I am interested. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. This is this is a little, I mean, this, these requests from HA are a little lower. Um, you know, we, we were definitely getting hit pretty hard for their period of time where we were just getting multiple calls back to back and the mutual aid request numbers were really going up a lot. Um, so and we have a little equipment down here. And yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Uh, that's that's all I got. Any other questions? Question? Yes. Business, but you said eleven were deceased, so they were dead upon your arrival at the scene. Yeah. Do you transport them? No. Okay. No, that is a function of the coroner's office. Well, thank you. I think that was a very complete report. I appreciate all the numbers. No problem. Yep. Cemetery Road Report. Hmm. I did Go not ahead. drive the roads. Did you do any inspection? Mm -hmm. Any notes? Um, no, I, they look very good. Uh, we had a tree down. Yesterday, I think, on North River, um, wasn't blocking, but it was close, and uh, Brandon cut it up, moved it off the side of the road. Another tree down in Clifton, blocking uh, the entrance at the top. Um, not the entrance, but the, the drive at the, at the top of the rise uh, up near the, the shed. And he cut that up. And Actually, put it over the fence uh, for the resident to use his fire. Yeah, it fell from off our property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But on ours. Our, not our property, off the cemetery property. Right. Okay. I have other road stuff. Oh, yes. Um, well, the bad news is. Um, Last week, during a burial, um, Brandon went to move the older of the two trucks, uh, number 265, um, in place to um, refill the grave with dirt after the, after the ceremony. And the truck started to give in fits, running very rough um, and difficult to move. He did get back to the garage um, and 
took it to uh, Fishers and Xenia on Monday. Um, what a workaholic. Martin Luther King Day, they still took it to Fishers, which I didn't expect them to do, but they did. Um, got it uh, diagnosed, repair estimated, and it, the well, short of it is it ate its camshaft. Oh. And um, decided to put half the camshaft down in the oil pan and was all the bearings and this, that, other thing. So, uh, Dan was aware of it and he discussed it with Fishers and I told him to make a decision what to do with it and so it's going to be repaired. Uh, we have no choice, it simply has to come back into service, no, just no question about it. And so they're going to repair it. Uh, they should have a new engine this week um, and uh, put it in and have it back in service sometime next week. So what scale, what order of magnitude cost? 10 to 15. 10 or 15,000. Wonderful. So that's the, the, the big event of it. Uh, other than that, uh, Brandon's been continuing to do the maintenance on all the equipment. He's actually finished now. He finished it up uh, what day is today? Geez, Wednesday. I think he finished it up Friday. Um, mm -hmm. So everything has been serviced to all the oil, all the spark plugs, all the grease. It's, it's all been done. Uh, so I'm, I'm really proud of him for doing all that. That's a, that was a big job. I mean, all the all the mower blades got sharpened, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and the mowers were clipped in, and you know, the ones we use in the uh, firehouse and stuff. So it was a you know, it was a lot of work. Got it done. Um, cemetery wise, uh, the acting sexton has a report. I've lost count, but I believe since our last meeting, we had six burials. Two in Clifton and four in Glen Forest. Uh, one natural burial in the tree for, in the in the trees oak tree section, oak grove <coughs> section. I'm sorry, I get that right. And, and that was a tree grave. Um, it was on Saturday, and if you recall, Saturday was not the nicest day. Luckily, uh, the rain from Friday stopped, and then it got real cold but it didn't really start to snow too bad. And so the weather cleared up enough for him to be able to uh, dig that grave without an incident and perform the, uh, the burial. That's the, the schedule. So we left out on that one. Um, I had no additional since last week, no additional requests for burials or, or grave purchases. Uh, a couple phone calls. Uh, but uh, nobody's uh, nobody's been out to look at potential grave sites this week so far. Uh, we may have one coming up, but don't know. And I think that's it. Are, are you saying that you're 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 feeling the calls for a yes. real request? Yeah, everything. Mm -hmm. I thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question about? Do it. Because when I'm at home and I see the ice and snow come. When snow becomes, just so I know what our duties are, uh -huh. when it starts to snow, do you have contact with um, Brandon or, or Dan and say, well, like, what do you guys think, get out there about 7 o'clock or whatever? Or do you just let them handle it unless they have a problem? The county, yes, you know, the dispatcher, the county calls okay. and says the roads need to be addressed. Oh, okay. And that's the time that we go out. Um, they call then our, our crew directly? Yeah. And are you always on that call or? Me? No. No, they just handle it? Yeah. Just curious. There was a dramatic incident where at a county township association meeting, uh, I guess it was maybe one of the annual engineers report or something like that at the, uh, in Xenia at the fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. And it was interrupted by the dispatcher and about a third of the crowd oh, I was there. Yeah, left that. because they had to go <laughs> drive plows and mm -hmm. spread salt. 
Uh, yeah, I think that's last year. Or 22. And we also have, oh, you have a contract? Yeah, we have a, each year we renew a contract with the village of Clifton, uh, which I will not uh, read, but we do their street repair and snow removal, and the per hour rate isn't changing, it's $50 an hour. Uh, and I would entertain a motion to uh, authorize this contract, and we will all uh, sign it. I so move. I second. Uh, any discussion? No. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. And Hollister says yes. And two copies. <clears throat> That's something that people forget, that it's not just rural roads, it's Clifton Village roads, or streets. Uh, in the fiscal officer's report, there are two Resolutions, resolution 2024-07, advance of funds, whereas it is of utmost importance to make funds available to compensate Miami Township fire rescue personnel, the Miami Township trustees acknowledge the fiscal officer made an advance of funds from fund 2281 to fund 2191 in the amount of $153,962.11. It's 32. And we're going to change that because I'm, I apologize, I didn't read it closely enough. I think she's already made the transfer yeah. okay. of $40,000, which okay. is where it was originally written. Got it. Yeah, that's what, that is, that's what she did. That's how she did this. <laughs> All right, I'll correct the second part of that first sentence. Trustees acknowledge the fiscal officer made an advance of funds from Fund 2281 to Fund 2191 in the amount of 40000 in the necessary timely manner. Furthermore, as soon as fiscally possible, uh, that amount will be returned to Fund 2281 as intended. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Nope. I'll move. Well, I think it could be said this is pending. Uh, am I right that at the end of the first quarter, the county will send us our tax money from last year, mm -hmm. and then our on hand money that we're transferring can go back to its original fund? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hollister says yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Resolution 2024-8, amendment of temporary appropriations. Whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township, now, therefore, the trustees authorize an amendment to the following temporary appropriations. And I'll say the temporary appropriations is what we do for the first three months of the year until we actually get the tax money. Uh, general fund Medicare increased by $50. Zoning salary increased by $1,200. Clifton Cemetery salaries increased by $214. <laughs> Tax fund PERS increased by $12. Cemetery operating supplies increased by $5,700. Fire levy fund salaries increased by 
$18,000. EMS billing contracted services increased by $4,500. I entertain a motion. Also moved. A second. Any discussion? No. Mr. Hollister, yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Any other discussion of the fund status we were given? Um. Inspector report is the first meeting of the month. Standing committee reports. Oh, oh, oh. let's back up. Okay. Would you like to uh, say anything about our joint meeting yesterday? I uh, would be happy for another trustee to comment on the zoning commission meeting last night, which each year they invite. I mean, we can, trustees or anyone can go to meetings, but uh, all, they invited us and all three of us were there. Perhaps the vice chair would like to comment. I thought it was a great meeting and I think the communication between the um, board and the zoning commission and the public is on the upswing and improving. I agree with your synopsis. And you've been to at least one other meeting this year, right? Yeah. Oh, I do. Oh, excuse me, in the last 12 months. Right. And I haven't been, I guess it was earlier in the year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say anything about last night's meeting? I think it went very well, and I reiterate my uh, deep appreciation for all of his own commission members. Um, sincere, hard work to try and, you know, try and reflect the will of the unincorporated area of the township in zoning through their, our comprehensive plan and their work to have the comprehensive or have the zone code mirror those uh, uh, desires of the comprehensive plan, which they have worked on over the last few years. The plan's been in place for 10 years, so they've been working slowly through the plan and have reviewed three or four of the major sections uh, and made some, some additional clarifications and added a section or two over the over time, but um, uh, they're, they're quite sincere in their efforts. I felt, and thank them heartily for it. I'm curious, you, you, two of you were here last night, right? Any, any comments, any reactions to the meeting? I would concur with Everything that you guys just said. That's it. <laughs> I think it was a nice discussion, and um, the views of several of the uh, zoning uh, commission were clarified. I thought somewhat compared to prior meetings that I attended, um, but I'm very new at understanding what goes on, and so maybe. They've always been clear, it's just my head clearing. Good. Shall we move on? We shall. Standing committee reports. MVRPC. I have no report. Green County Regional Planning. Uh, we met in a relatively short meeting and um, worked on um, a quarterly audit uh, report, and it, 
it, it was good. It was very good. Um, they do an excellent job of budgeting money and not spending. Uh, uh, this year they spent a little bit more because the the expense or the revenue was not quite as much as they expected. But they, they have a substantial carryover that they can work with, so that's good. There was a Bath Township zoning amendment. Um, a change of parcel just from one designation to another by the resident who wanted to build a, uh, a home for himself uh, on his family farm. And so that was approved. Little discussion, there's going to be quite a bit of discussion about the uh, tsunami of uh, residential housing that is going to be pushed on from the eastern part of the uh, of the county of eventually, um, probably closer to sooner than, certainly sooner than later from all the new technical uh, manufacturing that's coming up. Um, apparently, representatives of the, um, of the organizations, uh, Honda, Intel, or the, I can't remember the other battery manufacturer that's, that's going in, have been making the rounds of, of zoning commission um, meetings on the eastern section, Ross Township, uh, Jefferson Township, Center Creek Township, um, trying to gin up support for new developments. One of the problems is virtually all the new development that's going in is not what's called workforce development. It's high end. Well, I mean, it's starter homes at 500,000, 600,000, especially in Beer Creek Township. Uh, Beer Creek Township is so loaded with high-end homes that the pressure from the public to not put in low, low, lower price kind of, I mean, starter homes at lower price, 300,000, nobody could afford it. Anyway, but be that as it may, you know, they want to keep the high-end so they are property values you know, stay high. And obviously when there's that much pressure, the Zoning Commission pretty much, you know, goes with every development that comes down the pipe. But what's happening in over around Jamestown or mm -hmm. there is the same story? Of yeah, it's pretty much the same story. Although the because of the location, the, those price points are not as high. Um, they're by no means the you know, $175,000 house, you know, the little salt box house. These are going to be, let's see, what did he say? Upper 200s. There's a development that's already on the books. It's, it's not gone through the whole system, but for a 300 home uh, plot um, in Jamestown. There, <laughs> it was, there was a, uh, one of the Commissioners last night was talking about how I don't I, mean, I didn't know this, but you know in Huber Heights I got a little upset, but in Huber Heights was the Rose Music Center. I didn't know it, but they're building another music center right next to it, just a little bit smaller, but still three thousand seats for additional obviously entertainment. And across the street, across, well it's not across the street, but across Interstate seventy, they're building a. 500 unit condominium development, 519 units, and they're tax abating 100% of that for 15 years. Uh, is that in a township? No, it's in, it's, it's in Huber Heights itself. I wondered if that Rose Center, Rose Music Center was out in the township. Yeah, no, it's, it's in the incorporated area. And with the expectation that at the end of 15 years there will be a 40 million dollar property assessment, you know, put in place. 40 million. That's pretty big, isn't it? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> 2064. Cash in. And there's just no affordable homes being put up. I mean, nothing on, 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 you know on the radar. It's all high end stuff. So anyway, it's kind of it's kind of concerning because there's just going to be and these are these are not going to be um, 
you know, line workers at ten dollars an hour. I mean, these are going to be, you know, highly paid people, but still, in all, it's difficult for them to to, to come in at a five hundred thousand dollar price point. So that was an interesting conversation. That's all I had for that report. I wasn't at the YS Development Corporation because I was out of town, so. I went, um, and it, it was in, <clears throat> because the school board and village council had not had their reorganization meetings, their annual reorganization meetings, it was kind of in flux as who would become president, uh, who's going to be on the, the Development Corporation board. Uh, but there were reports that were in the same, or some of them made reference to some of the things that Chris just reported on, uh, but focusing on not residential development, but the demand uh, for smaller suppliers to the new tech companies coming in in Fayette County. Was it Madison? Or maybe both Madison Fayette and then there's one up in near Hoover Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, that the hopes of there being some development at our uh, village industrial park or business and education center. Uh, So, does Alison Mooney, does yeah. Alison Mooney uh, attend those meetings? No, right. has not. Has not. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lisa, who is sort of acting executive director, uh, has been attending uh, some of the promotion meetings mm -hmm. to sort of talk about Yellow Springs. Uh, there was a presentation by Michael Slaughter of uh, it's kind of a, not exactly a PowerPoint, but a quick pitch about the village of Yellow Springs, the different uh, reasons why it would be an attractive place both for business and perhaps to live. Uh, and that will be used at some of these uh, public events or some of these commercial outreach events. Uh, I'm not going to be a board member, but I'm interested in staying in touch uh, with what happens with YSDC. Uh, and I'm assuming that Lisa will be contacting you about organizing a trustees and YSDC meeting uh, that they, similar to what they've done with village council and with the school board, just to talk about economic development in the township. Uh, so it was a. It was a meeting for reports, not really for making any, taking any action in new direction. Uh, Clifton Union Cemetery Board has not met in eight months, uh, but one of our members has been seriously under the weather, but has is now prepared to attend meetings, so we'll have one in the next month or so. Anything for climate action? Well, they have, this must be an old agenda because they haven't been in existence for about six months, but no. <laughs> Are there standing committees that should be listed here? That, I mean, as we cross one off, is there any other group that we want to hear? Uh, sure. I mean, somebody was putting the Township Association on here once. 
or twice. Yeah, it's his list seems to change every week. But um, mm -hmm. environmental commission that I don't, I'm not a member of, but a voting member, but sit in and I have no report. And also, um, you know, probably won't, we'll probably won't be hearing much from the school, um, or, may, or maybe we will from the school, um, safe schools, routes, what is it called? Um, safe routes to schools committee, or yeah, Yellow Springs Transportation Committee. So, no. Oh, right. To get the uh, I imagine the Natural Burial Committee is not meeting too much in the winter. No. Yeah, thank you. Natural Burial Committee. Oh, one other thing from the Development Corporation meeting. Uh, everyone was alerted to the pending April 8th uh, mm -hmm. solar crowd that may be arriving yeah, to, to watch the uh, solar eclipse and I understand you've gone to a couple uh, meetings where yeah yeah we've I've gone to two different meetings um, you know just in preparation and uh, um, yeah, yeah. there there's definitely more to be done and I we're, we're gonna very likely get hit pretty hard you know, millions of visitors coming in. Um, so, I mean, that's what they experienced the last time in Louisville. It was pretty dramatic. <clears throat> and a lot of, you know, just... So what's the practical, possible practical impact for us? Um, well, at least in part for us, I would look and say that, you know, there's going to be a large... I would expect a large crowd of people wanting to come to Yellow Springs to to observe because our field of view is supposed to be pretty easy, not perfect, but pretty decent. Ninety-five easy. percent or ninety-nine percent or something. Yeah, very. It's very good. So we should see a pretty substantial crowd in town. Now, of course, if the weather is bad, mm -hmm. then okay. You know, a lot of clouds in the sky. Then we do a lot of planning for nothing. But you know, that's the nature of the beast. And um, you know the fire chiefs have been talking about it quite a bit, uh, as well as EMA. Um, the state's actually started a, an online form for people to for uh, asking us to to try and get people to fill this form out if they know that they're planning an event, so that we know statewide kind of numbers. Uh, that just was released. Um, uh, I think it was Friday, Friday or Tuesday, I can't remember which day it was. Um, and so, you know, I, just hopefully we have clouds, I guess. Um, people will, my understanding is people would would come to the area unless it's clear that it's not gonna be clear. Yep. That it's certain that it's gonna be cloudy, mm -hmm. but uh, more likely that people will come in anticipation of the yeah. possible um, in partial eclipses, you miss out if it's cloudy, but in a full eclipse, it's going to get dark in the middle of the daytime, right? Well, now. yeah, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. you're not going to miss that. No, that's we true. Your good point. Yep, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah. New miss, oh, question? Uh, no comment, if you wouldn't mind. Um, sure. I have heard... Um, from some amateur radio folks that were involved in previous events of the solar eclipse magnitude. And uh, the, the two or three comments that come to mind were, a lot of people will come in the day, two or three days before the event. There may be a lot of human interaction which results in more calls to the police and fire department. Mm -hmm. Everybody will try to leave two minutes after the event. Mm -hmm. They took three days to get here, and they're all leaving at the same, same moment. And the cell towers will not be able to handle all the calls going through in a small place from a million people, including the ones that say, I need help. And so it will be difficult and a big pressure on the fire and police 
as well as any citizens who want to do grocery shopping or get their children from school because I think it's coming at 3 o'clock in the afternoon or yeah. 2.30 or something. I don't know exactly. So I'm just imagining that maybe <clears throat> Yellow Springs would want to, and maybe you're already doing that, publicly problem solve some of those issues ahead of time. How will we prepare for a sunny eclipse? So, I mean, I don't really know anything. I just remember this person talking and being pretty astounded even a year later at how much needed to be done at that 20 minute period and for the next four hours of traffic jams afterwards. And that person wasn't police or fire, but he was saying amateur, amateur radio was um, constantly trying to be of some help in that situation because they have communications with police and fire, hopefully, that don't go through the cell towers and the normal cell phone. But that's a minor point, but I mean, it is potentially a very, even in some ways, destructive event for the community for a short period of time. So <coughs> we look forward to your good work on that. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, we, in fact, actually, it's th this, this may end up being, we may actually turn this room into a, uh, a mini EOC actually during the event or before the event and actually have a ham radio person here because they have the ability to come here, plug in, and they use our rooftop antennas up on, you know, on top of the building. And um, uh, probably something similar with that actually in Old Springs PD as well. You know a lot more about this than I do, but sometimes equipment sits idle and unused for months. Mm -hmm. It might need to be used two weeks before the event to see if it works the way one hopes. Yeah, right. Okay, I, I want to move to new business and rearrange the order. Uh, We're going to cross out comp time policy. Yeah, cross out comp time next policy. Next let's let's next have discussion of to next week. of funding EMS fire and EMS payroll through March. What, what's our estimate on that? Mm -hmm. That is, we will get a chunk of money from the county at the end of March. But until then... It, it's my opinion that we need to ask for an advance from the county mm -hmm. within the next uh, six weeks. Please. What's the procedure on that? Uh, Resolution from the fiscal officer you know, requesting an advance, and then it will just plain be done. That's what happened last year. So that's something we would do maybe at the next meeting? I would think we could probably put that in place. Okay. Um, I have some questions, or some comments, I guess. I just better, I'm only one trustee. Um, we have about $14,000 left in the payroll account. We'll probably need about around 200000 before April. Um, we're going to transfer from 2281, maybe up to $153,000, but we're planning on paying that back to 2281 mm -hmm. completely. Um, well. And, and then, I guess, I mean, Apparently we can't, according to Margaret, we can't take that money and transfer it cleanly from 2281 to 2191. It has to be done as an advance to be paid back. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why, but she yeah. checked with the author. And so I'm, I'm just going to say this, and like I said, there are three of us, and we could all decide how we want to do this. One goal is to make it you know, we had quite, quite a year last year where we had a lot of expenses and a lot of rearranging and we had a new levy and the levy came through and kind of saved us. Um, 
And then, for a long time, it was understood that we were going to give ARPA money, our, our, our stimulus money from the Biden administration to help us get through a rough patch in fire and EMS. Um, so getting to January is good, but in, in actuality, we, it's good to get to April because that's when the new taxes come. Mm -hmm. And we worked so hard cutting, re, reorganizing the um, fire station. Denny did a great job with um, streamlining staffing to save money. We um, restructured the administration, we're down to one. And we've studied our budget we're on top of it more than ever. And with the ARPA money, we would have the opportunity to not just make it to January, we, we, we might come close to even making it to, to April, the, the real start of the, the, I guess, I don't know if it's fiscal year, but when the taxes come. And we would get, and we've gotten all through Collins' retirement, all through the restructuring, and we'd be able to start clean and really see what we have. And by one year, we start on April, we go one year and we know what it costs us to run this and how much money we have left over to put toward capital funds. And so the fact that we're borrowing from a fund again and we're gonna use advancements to pay it back and then start behind the eight ball is disappointing to me. And I, I wondered if we we made the made the decision or well no we haven't made the decision about whether we're going to use the ARPA funds to help us right the ship and then start. Of course, all these new calculations and, and expenses uh, really only began roughly in August. You know, so we only you know we've only had four or five months you know, of, of those, fin of that financial uh, pattern. We don't have a year's worth of it, which, of course, we're going into now. Um, but if we got our, if we, if we use the upper money to get ourselves caught up, we would have a full year. Um, well, I, I, the pattern's gonna continue. We have one, we have one list, full-time pension employee. Well, we sat down and, and worked some of these numbers out based on a 12-month requirement. And now we're talking about going from April to the end of the year on, on that new, uh, on that new uh, spending pattern as opposed to a whole year's worth. Um, I'm not sure that you know, we would end up with a fairly decent carry over next year if this pattern of you know expenditures continues for the for the full year. You're not sure you you're not sure that we would end up with a fairly healthy I'm not sure that we would not end up yeah. with a, a fairly good chunk. And that that fairly good chunk we're talking we're talking about is what's is what's going to be our future capital funds. I mean like I, I don't know, I just don't you mean I, I don't future capital for ambulance, fire, fire trucks, trucks, and other many other things? So I guess I guess you, you, you kind of spent two years convincing me that that the that that money should go into fire and EMS. But that money, you mean ARPA, ARPA money? And and then you did a good job of convincing me because I'm convinced. <laughs> no. Now, I just wanted to bring it up. I, I have a, a phone call. T we have the, you know, it, it's, that's, what it's, that's what it's allocated for now, so. Legally, I mean, we allocated it for that, so. Um, if we did something else with it, I don't, I don't want to get into weeks today. They made a special category, you know, the, with the, what they call the final rule. They said we could put our, if we, if we make, if we're an entity that has a budget under 10 million, you know, let's let's cut all the red tape for, for for you. You're allowed to put that money into basically general operating things, and then um, 
that will cut through a lot of red tape. If we decided to do it with something else, it, it might not be as clean. And, and they basically said at, at the conference last year, you would be smart to do that. And then if you had a pet project or something, it, maybe putting that into general operations will free up money elsewhere, kind of, you know, like, don't make, don't make life hard for yourself. So I just thought I'd speak to that, and I don't know how you guys feel about it. Because you say we'll have a fairly good carry, or we're going to start out by paying back. We started out this year by paying back borrowed money to the general fund. And we're, last year, paying back 140000 to the general fund. And it looks like, disappointingly, it looks like we're going to spend, start this year paying back hundred and some thousand dollars to the 2281. So, that's all I have to say. I mean, it's going to come down to a vote of how. At what point? When do we have to? Well, we have to do it by December 31st. You're right. But, I mean, the, the point of. You asked this to be on the agenda, and I interpreted it as a review of the situation, which we've just done. Yeah, I wouldn't ask anyone to make a vote. I don't know how clear the review was. It's okay. clear in my we, mind. We didn't like, put numbers up on the okay. projector um, board. But no, I, I in no way wanted us, expected anybody to be hit with this and make a decision mm -hmm. the same night. I just. I just dream of a time when we know exactly where we are and exactly how much we're spending and how much and exactly how much we're putting into capital funds. So, so when did we occupy this building? This is third year. I mean, we've been going through big changes, new building, changes, shifting. Fewer volunteers, change in leadership, mm -hmm. uh, and Danny's reduced uh, the retirement. The payroll months lease from a year ago. Super expensive equipment that has been inflated. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's if y'all don't have any comments, that's all. That's the only thing I'm thinking. Of, so. Yeah, no, no. Move it. Okay. Uh, unless there's old business that I that we haven't noted, the last piece is executive session for matters of personnel, and we we're not expecting to make take any action, are we? No. Uh, so I'll don't need to don't need to wait. No way. No way. Hmm? No way. You make a motion, we go into the executive session. You second? Oh, that's already turned it off again, huh? I second. No. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you all for coming.